Hey everyone, this week some Russian hackers launched a cyber attack on a major US oil pipeline, demanding millions of dollars in the process. I can imagine that the idea came about when the Kremlin asked the hackers if they had any new ideas quote in the pipeline and a light bulb clicked above their head, possibly followed by a click behind their head as an FSB operative held up a pistol and told them to get on with it. Either way, motorists in the US southeast are now paying the sort of eye-watering petrol prices that haven't been seen since, well, Britain 20 years ago. Four dollars a gallon, is that it? Still cheaper than orange juice, I guess. Although the one positive thing to come out of it is the hilarious videos online of people dangerously trying to stockpile fuel by filling up carrier bags with petrol at the pumps, presumably leaving their insurance company with lots of burning questions should anything go awry. One curious byproduct of the outage is that they finally caught and arrested that man who went crazy with a firebomb in New York a few weeks back after his car ran out of petrol in Florida. Say we will about electric cars, or if you've been driving a Nissan Leaf then it'd have probably caught him in New Jersey, less than 100 miles from the scene of the crime. Anyway, now that the pipeline company's paid to ransom in full, it pretty much means open season for this sort of thing, I guess. There's a very good reason you're not supposed to negotiate with terrorists. It did, however, make me think of that old joke about what's the difference between Amy Winehouse and ExxonMobil. One likes pipelines, the other likes pipes and lines. Anyway, the other story this week is about somewhere else in the world with no oil, and that would be Israel, the one country in the Middle East not to have any massive oil or gas reserves, opting instead for being the land of milk and honey. Yeah, that promised an age well, did it, Moses? Anyway, attacks by Hamas have kicked off with a major retaliation. So far, I'm reading 110 dead in Gaza, 7 dead in Israel. Well, 100 for 7, you could just say 24-7 because it's round-the-clock fighting right now anyway. There's some pictures online that look like Instagram-worthy sunsets until you realise that it's actually a nighttime shot with a lot of fire and explosions on the horizon. And now we're up to the stage where Hamas is calling for a ceasefire. But Israel's chosen to go the other route and call up 9,000 reservists and prepare for a possible ground invasion. You know, I'd like to imagine that the recruitment posters for that army are like the old World War One Kitchener ones, but instead it's Benjamin Netanyahu pointing and saying that he needs Jew. Can anything be done? Should anything be done? Well, the usual idiots are in force online, and apparently peace will only come about when the British consumer starts boycotting Marks and Spencers for selling Israeli oranges or some daft nonsense like that. I'm personally more along the lines that both sides are as bad as each other, but Israel at least has the right to defend itself, and neither side really wants a two-state solution anyway, let's be honest. They're both openly advocating for a one-state solution, where they are the one state. In the meantime, I guess, let's just close with a joke. What do you say when you meet someone in Jerusalem? The answer, quote, is really nice to see you. It's really nice, it's really. Never mind. See you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.